Hey guys, it's Jeff here. Uh, I just got done watching uh, Green Zone, starring Matt Damon. Um, I'm, I'm still like, I just got done watching it. I'm still kind of processing it like I usually do with these videos. Like, I usually don't take notes or anything. So, I'm still kind of working out in my head what I want to say. And like, doing these videos kind of helps, I guess. Uh, I might make it more boring to watch because the videos aren't as structured. And I say, oh, and you know, and stuff like that a lot. But, I don't know, it helps me form my thoughts about it, but, um, you know, right at the start, I say, I liked it a lot, I thought it was a good movie, very intense, fast-paced, exciting, lots of action, a, a smart movie, intelligent, had stuff to say, but it always moved at, like, a breakneck pace, almost to the point where, if you don't know your Iraq war, or you're not used to watching movies like this you might be a little lost and confused but that you know that's your problem that's not the movie's fault um so green zone it's a it's a fictional iraq war thriller but it's based on a lot of f fact and a lot of truth um actually it's also based inspired by a book who knows how closely it follows that book but it, you know the book was some reporting about the green zone even though most of it I don't think happens in the green zone I don't know but um is it real I mean is it all fact based no I doubt Matt Damon's character is a real person I doubt everything went down the way it, it did but I would say that the movie is true. You know, sometimes a difference between, you know, factually based and truth. I mean, it is. Most of the things in this are concepts that I'm familiar with from watching what went on with the Iraq War. And it matches up to, you know, a lot of news stories and stuff that I heard throughout these last. God, how many years? Seven years? Something like that? Or no? Five years? I don't fucking know. But a lot of it matches up. Um, I guess what I'm saying is if you go into it, uh, don't think you're seeing a documentary on the Iraq War. It's not. This is a balls-to-the-wall action movie that follows certain events and, I guess, uh, contemplates or guesses why things happen the way they did. And it's gonna, it's a movie that I think got criticism. I'm sure Fox News didn't like it. I saw some news on Netflix saying that Matt Damon's character should be like arrested or something for what he did because he was acting against the government. And, you know, it'll be seen as like an anti war movie and liberal propaganda by people who are. I don't know, flat out wrong if you ask me on this. Um, because one, what kind of Iraq war movie do you want them to make? Um, were the heroes who went in there and saved them? I mean, it doesn't make for compelling drama. And it's not, it's not true as to what happened. I mean, uh, the whole movie is about Matt Damon, he's like a, he's a chief something soldier who's like looking for WMDs, like that's his, that's his team's missions in Iraq, like so they'll, you know, they're going on all, all these like uh, missions to go raid these places and they get in these warehouses and there's nothing there and it begins to frustrate him after a while because here he and his guys are putting their lives on the line to go do these missions based on bad intel. And he keeps bringing it up at meetings and stuff and everyone doesn't want to listen to him. But, you know, he wants to do something effective while he's there in Iraq and bureaucracy and... The evil government is holding him back, but it, I mean, 
does that sound too off from what happened? Um, and so he decides to start gathering his own intel and trying to find out what's going on with the WNDs and what is the CIA's source. You know, he's trying to figure out what's... He's trying to do two things. He's trying to get some real intel and actually capture people so that you can find out where the, you, uh, the WMDs are. But he's also trying to figure out who the, the government source is because, you know, they've got nothing but bad intel from the start. So that's like the story of the movie. Like, he starts to do his own his own little missions and he starts running into tr to trouble and getting deeper into it, like... I don't know, conspiracy or... I mean, if you're familiar with the Iraq War, you know what he's going to find out. I mean, spoilers, there were no WMDs. And they did have bad intel. Or, you know, maybe they wanted the bad intel because they didn't really care. They just wanted an excuse to go to war. And if you don't believe that, if you think that's bullshit... The facts are against you. I'm sorry. I mean, you're just believing in a lie, I guess. you could. I'm sure there's people that will tell me, no, you're believing in a lie. Well, I would have to say that the facts stack up against you. And it does uh, criticize the government for its bureaucracy, but it also does say that the Bush administration, besides not giving a shit, about whether their intel was correct. It, you know, it suggests that the Bush administration let this war just devolve into pure chaos because the Bush administration was not good at running a war because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. Uh, again, this is another one where it's like, you could call that opinion, but that's pretty much how I see the way things went. Um, you know, and there's a lot of things that are based on facts, like we didn't use the Iraq army and we, we dissolved them for no reason when we should have been using them and people would disagree. But again, it's just, if you know, but I don't know, I, I can't say if you know about this, you'll agree with me, but it's just, I agree with the, the, the point of view that the film takes. But none of that is really important to enjoying the movie. Unless you're very conservative politically, and or you just want to believe that America is like this good guy who rides in and saves the day, and we couldn't do anything wrong, and our government couldn't... F That's the thing. Like, these conservatives and shit, like, oh, you can't question us, we're doing good over there, we're liberating them. But at the same time, they don't trust the government, so what... I guess they only trust the government when they're in charge. When it's been proven that they shouldn't, they're... Hey, there were no WMDs. There's no arguing this. Um, but I'm getting too much into what the film, what the film's subject matter and subtext was really. I mean, I guess like it was a show that this is like a fast-paced, fun action movie, but it can inspire discussion and debates. And you know, if you see this with some fairly intelligent people, you'll have some something to talk about afterwards and if you see it with people that have different points of view on this uh, you're gonna be arguing for a while well, that's a good sign that's a good movie um, I think regardless of your politics just judging this movie based on the technical aspects and how it's put together this is really well done I mean it's directed by Paul Greengrass and starring Matt Damon so, you know, who together they did the, the Born Identity movies or whatever. Um, so I guess a lot of people will say it's like Born Identity in Iraq. But um, I don't know. I, I can't compare it because I, I haven't seen the Born movies. But um, from the snippets I have seen of them, it's similar to here. Uh, just really fast-paced action uh, shaky cam, but well done shaky cam where you can tell what's going on. A lot, you know, some people don't like shaky cam and they kind of blame Greengrass for making it more popular, which you're totally entitled to that opinion. I, uh, 
I myself kind of don't prefer shaking cam in a lot of instances, but I think uh, the reason it became popular was because Greengrass is good at it, and he is very good at it here. The action here is just cool, man. And I had someone on Twitter going back and forth with me about this movie. They also watched it tonight, and they were like, dude, it was the boringest movie ever where nothing happened and there was no action. Which is just, it's about as factually accurate as there being WMDs in Iraq. I mean, the movie starts off, boom, right away with action. And throughout, there's you know chase scenes, foot chases, shootouts, sniper scenes, close combat scenes. Probably not as much close combat as uh, the Bourne movies. There was like only one really scene, like, scene where they, people got into it. No, there actually there was a couple. There was a couple fights. Um, you know... So I don't I don't know where this this guy is uh, coming from with I feel like we didn't see the same movie, but other than him, I mean I I haven't heard a lot about other people's opinions on the movie, but I thought it was very entertaining and fast paced, and even when there's not action scenes, it um, even when it's going into expository stuff or just Matt Damon talking to somebody trying to get info or. Him going to the CIA or infighting between the CIA, like even the non-action scenes almost move like an action scene. It's so fast-paced, you gotta really uh, pay attention because if you if you turn your head or you zone out for a second, you could miss something important. <sighs> the movie's not gonna slow down for the people that can't keep up with it, um, and that to me, I I can't knock the movie for that. I understood what was going on and the significance of every scene and why, you know, things were happening. So I think if I was able to keep up, you should be too. Really, I felt, I feel like I've spent a lot of time talking about the politics of this one. Really, it is, it's, it's a good action movie. It's a brainy action movie and it, it's based on, you know, real things in reality and it has something to say about them. But for the most part, it does stick to the action and and him solving the mystery of who the who the bad intel is coming from and whether there are WMDs. Now, one thing you're gonna know going in, you know that there are no WMDs, but some people might might not know the why and how of it. And you shouldn't take this at face value as this is how this happened. But it's, I mean, it sounds pretty close to me. I mean. If you don't agree that the Bush administration was just looking for an excuse to go into Iraq, then you're going to have a lot of problems and get pissed off at this movie. But even if, if, even if you are something like that, if you get past it, I think you can have a good time with it. Maybe it'll change your mind. I don't know. But uh, it seems like they were going for like a good popcorn action flick, but, but smart and based on real things and trying, I guess, to get the masses in on some of the details of the Iraq war and I think they did a good job with it um I don't want to say too much and spoil things but I think they did a good job with it um I don't want to keep going in circles I've already gone 13 minutes but uh definitely I thought a really solid action thriller about the Iraq war uh, it would be unfair to compare it to the Hurt Locker. Hurt Locker is a smaller, more personal uh, movie about guys in a bomb squad, and it's really just about those guys. Whereas this is kind of like the opposite of it. It's a big, blown-out action movie that uh, also tries to tell the story of the war, the early days of the war, and explain what why things went so horribly wrong, which you know Hurt Locker doesn't even approach. Uh, I think Hurt Locker I liked a lot better, and it's a, I think it is a better film overall, but if you're looking for a fun action movie and you're interested in the Iraq War, you're going to get out, a lot out of this. I think uh, I think you'll have as much fun as I did with it. I really wasn't that excited to see it either, um, but it was very solid. I'm giving it a very stone solid 4 out of 5 stars. Definitely check out Green Zone and let me know what you think.